Hello, welcome to Severin Church. Jesus' name. 
And God, we just ask that you be with our president and the leaders of the world, that they will keep wisdom before them, and their hearts will not be so hardened that they will hear each other and see that there's a different way than war, that there's a way of peace and caring for each other. God, we are thankful for this wonderful week you've given us, and we know that there's not many weeks left till school starts. We just pray that you be with our teachers and leaders and students that are getting ready to begin school shortly. Protect them and watch over them. And Jesus, we lift up the names of those that we love and we pray for now as we share them with the congregation. continue to bless us as your people and we seek your will for we pray this in Jesus name and call us to say by praying our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day
was preaching today again from the uh, Old Testament, it's Psalms 121. 121. Psalms 121. <coughs> Amen. Thank you, Pastor Art. Now, I thought I'd let the choir sit down with their loved ones today, and that way I could see them and they could see me. Just something a little different today. The sermon today is called Take Life's Journey with the Lord. I hope you've enjoyed the sermon series on the book of Psalms. It's been very enlightening. It's been very, uh, to me, it's, been, it's given me joy. And it's reminded me of God's presence in my life and in your life, that he's always there with us. One of the most beautiful trips that Barbara and I ever went on was out in Colorado. It was a pastor's convention. Anybody ever been to Colorado before? Beautiful, beautiful place. I'd like to go back one time and look around. It's a beautiful place, and we saw the beauty that was on the, the, up above the ground, and then we went in the caves below. You can go miles and miles and miles underground and see the, the beauty of creation. So it's a wonderful, wonderful place. But let me ask you this morning, if your life was a trip, how's it going? Think about it for a minute. If your life was a trip, how's it going? Do you feel like maybe you're broken down alongside the road and you need AAA? Are you going backwards or forward? Maybe you're tired. Life can be tough, and you know that when you do a lot of traveling, it makes you tired. But think about it to where you are right now in life's journey. How would you say it's going? I know many people who are here have struggles in their life. Many people here have sorrows in their life. They're dealing with health issues, dealing with financial issues, lots of things. And Psalm 121 is a beautiful psalm about walking the road with the Lord. One of my good friends, David Crockett, is back here, and, and Peggy, uh, and we've prayed for David. He lives in Florida, and he's here today, and he gave testimony when he walked in that God has, has been blessing him in his health. And we give God the praise for that this morning, David. Thank you. Psalm 21 is called the Traveler's Psalm. If you look at your Bible, sometimes it says in there that Psalm 121 is a psalm of ascents. Does yours say that? Do some of them say a song of degrees? Okay, a sense actually means journey to a higher place. As I've taught you in the past couple of weeks, the Psalms are actually songs that the Hebrew people sing. I tried to find a Hebrew uh, song of, one, of Psalm 121 to play this morning, but I couldn't find it. But the people, the Hebrews, as they were going to Jerusalem, would sing this song. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. From Jericho to Jerusalem 
is about 17 miles. They would make the trip. But it climbs up to an elevation of 3,500 feet. So if you can imagine, as they're walking along and they're singing, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. They were talking about Jerusalem when they got there and they could worship the Lord. Not only was it a high elevation, but also it was an experience, a spiritual experience for them, going to Jerusalem, to the temple, and worshiping. I pray today that you can say, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills, from whence cometh my strength, my strength comes from the Lord. I hope that you are joyous in coming to church on Sunday morning and worshiping together with your brothers and sisters in Christ. I can normally look out. I like it that Pastor Art does the announcements and things because I'm studying you. I'm looking and seeing who's smiling and who's not. And if you're not smiling, I know that you'll probably get a pastor text or a call just to make sure that you're okay this week. But Psalm 121 is a beautiful psalm. And when the Jews went up to Jerusalem, they would sing that. When Jesus was a small boy... And he went with his parents to Jerusalem. He too would have sung this beautiful song. I lift up mine eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Can't you just envision people and families walking together as they walk along the, the hot, dusty road to Jerusalem? 17 miles is a long ways to walk, especially in the heat especially when it's dry like that. And also, this psalm reminds us, because it's a traveling song, it's better to travel life with the Lord than without the Lord. Y'all don't believe that this morning. I ain't heard the first amen this morning. <clears throat> I'm asking him again, Pastor Art says. <laughs> this psalm reminds us it's better to travel with the Lord than without the Lord. Amen. That's right, y'all believe it. All right, I like that this morning. Let's look at Psalm 121 this morning. And I want to look at the first two verses, if I could. I lift up mine eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. When you lift your eyes up, I'm thinking that the person who wrote this psalm could have been down could have been downcast, could have been sorrowful. And you know, when we're sorrowful, don't we have a tendency to look down as we walk and we look down as we go? And then the, the psalmist realizes that, why am I downcast? Why am I feeling sad today? And you can almost imagine his head going up as he looks to the heavens and he says, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills. Can you picture that this morning? From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord. Psalm 42, 5 says, Why are you downcast, O my soul? Put your trust in God. Life's tough, isn't it? Life is tough. We get thrown curves all the time that we don't expect. But one thing we can trust in and know is because of this, we know that God is walking with us along the path of life. How close is God? Extend your right hand this morning. That's not an option. You've got to extend your right hand this morning. That's how close God is. Right there. He doesn't slumber and he doesn't sleep. He's standing there right with you. Does that give you comfort today? Because it gave me comfort as I really got into the Word this morning. And as the Jews, the Hebrew people, were traveling to Jerusalem, they were singing, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Because the road from Jericho to Jerusalem was a very dangerous road. They estimated that there were 12,000 thieves hiding in the hills. 
and the rocks waiting to rob people. They would come down like mad dogs. They would kill people. They would rob you. And yet the Hebrew people had to travel this road, the dangerous road, to get to where they needed to go. Isn't that like our life sometimes? We're walking through life. Sometimes it's dangerous. Sometimes it makes us uneasy. Sometimes we are fearful. But as they're walking, they are singing this song, Aaron. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my strength? My strength comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. What a comfort it was to them. And what a comfort it should be to you this morning. Why are you downcast? Lift up your eyes to the hills. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. The roads were dangerous. There were no GPS. There were no cell phones. Any of you been lost before when you were driving? Women say, yeah, men will never admit that. We're just, we're just taking a shortcut. Let me, let me tell you, I, before I had a GPS or cell phone, I went to Richmond one night with Barb and the boys were small. I may have told this story before. And I got so lost in the wrong side of Richmond, I didn't know which side I was. I didn't know if I was coming or going. But I knew the area I was in, I didn't want to stay very long. And so I finally pulled into a gas station that had bars over the windows. And I get out of the car and I start walking to ask directions. And Barbara hits the automatic lock. I knew that I was on my own. <laughs> it's a sad feeling to be lost. Finally, we got directions and were able to get straight. But there were a lot of prayers going on. It is a helpless feeling to be lost. And so they were singing. They would, they would sing this song. That our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. In 2004, scientists pointed the Hubble te telescope at a patch of sky near the Orion constellation. The Hubble stayed focused for 400 orbits over 11 days. And the patch of sky that they were looking at was no bigger than a grain of sand that you would hold at arm's length. And what they discovered was 10,000 new galaxies. We already know that there's over 500 billion galaxies in our universe. So if God created the universes, and I believe that, I believe we, just, we don't have a, an idea of how much or how expanse the heavens are that He created. If God can create that with a single word, can He help us with our problems? Do you believe that today? God would say, that's a little thing. I can take care of that. I can walk with you through life. I am God, the one who loves you so very much. The Apostle John, in John chapter 1, if you want to turn there just for a moment, I want to read a few verses. John chapter 1 said the following. And I want you to find that so we can read it together. John chapter 1. Are you there with me this morning? Now where you see the word, word, is capitalized, isn't it? That's another word for Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Lord was in the beginning. 
He created everything that you and I will see. Now go back to Psalm 121. Let's look at verses 3 through 4. It says that the Lord will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you neither slumbers nor sleeps. A man named John Beener said the following, Nothing ever catches our God by surprise. Not skinned knees, not parking tickets, not dashed hopes, not cancer, not marital problems, and not financial setbacks. So what does that mean to you and me today? If it doesn't surprise God that you're going through this, and He already knows you're going to go through it. Am I right? If He already knows you're going to go through it, He knows how much grace He needs to give you to help you through it. So when the trials and problems in life happen, always remember, God knew this was going to happen. And God will and can help me. He will be with me because He never slumbers and He never sleeps. Then in verse 5 and 6, we see that God says that I am your shelter. Go back to the, the visual that I gave you before of the people walking towards Jerusalem and the sun beating down on their heads. And they're singing that God is our shelter. What does a shelter do? Protects you from the sunlight. And they're singing this as they go. He shelters us during the storm. Now because the Lord is there with us does not mean you're not going to go through troubles in this life. But what it does mean is that God is with you. What do you do if you don't have that? There are a lot of people outside of these church walls that don't know that. Do you know the pastors in Gloucester did a study and I was at a meeting the other day. Do you know what the percentage of people are in Gloucester who attend church regularly? 5%. 5% of the people in Gloucester go to church on a regular basis. That means there's 95% of people out there that don't know that Psalm 121 holds a hope in their life. We have an obligation to spread the light, don't we? And finally, we see in verses 7 and 8 that the Lord will keep us from all harm. He watches over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Think about when you had your little kids, and your kid wanted to go out and, and play in the yard. Mamas, you kept eye on that kid, though, didn't you? They might have thought they were out there on their own with their independence, but mama behind the curtain making sure that he's all right. Always the Lord watches your coming and your going. And he protects you. There was a young man named Clory, Clory, whose family moved to Philadelphia from Minnesota. His mother had lost her job, and she moved in a pretty bad area of Philadelphia. And she had just recently come here as an immigrant, escaping the war torn area. This young man was 13 years old. He was only five foot tall and very thin. And he began being picked on. And it escalated and it escalated to the point that in January, a group of boys took him, drug him in the woods. They beat him up, stuffed him in a tree. And then they hung him on a, on a steel fence by his, by his clothes and left him there. The attackers actually videoed the attack of what they were doing. And it went to Facebook. So the the boys ended up in jail, those who were attacked. But it scarred this young man. For 30 minutes they had kicked him, they had beat him, and they had abused him. And left him for dead. A talk show on, on the mornings heard his story and they invited him to come into their show this little teeny 13-year-old boy. And they played the video in the background of what these these, these men had done to him. 
And they asked him what his response was. And his lip quivering, he said, maybe next time it could have been somebody younger than me. What he didn't know, what the boy didn't know, is that the TV show in Philadelphia got three of the Philadelphia Eagles linemen to come in and sat down beside him. Deshaun Jackson, who's a wide receiver, brought his autographed jersey and gave it to the young boy. And this boy was a diehard Philadelphia Eagle fan. And the three men, two big linemen and Deshaun Jackson, surrounded this little boy and said, If you ever need us, here is our cell phone number. And he gave him the cell phone number. They pronounced to the world that don't mess with this little boy anymore. Because he's got a backup. Isn't that like what our Lord does? Don't mess with my children. Don't mess with my children because they got a backup. Walking with the Lord during life. The Lord watches your coming and going. And oftentimes the scripture tells us he sends his angels ahead of us. I bet there are many times in your life that you've been protected by angels and never knew about it. Unawares of what's going on. I wanted you to be encouraged today by this psalm. That in this life you are not by yourself. In this life during good times and bad times you are not by yourself. During times of trouble and happiness you are not by yourself. And I want you to be able to say today with confidence, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my strength. My strength comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Amen? Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank you so much for the scripture today and how it just encourages in me and I know encourages the people here, Lord. Thank you that you are a God that loves us so very much. And God, now we just pray during the invitation time that if there's someone here that needs to accept you as Lord and Savior, that they might step forward today. Or maybe someone needs prayer. Lord, that I can pray with them. Whatever the decision today, we'll turn it over to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Severin Church now offers the availability of giving online. Go to our website, severinchurch.faith, and click on the Give Online tab. From there, you'll be taken to a secure site to create a unique login and password. Thank you for your generosity.